Okay. All right, our next speaker today is Evan Gale. Evan's going to talk about uh, unreliable detectors with relativistic center of mass and is at the University of Queensland. Evan, whenever you want, floor is yours. Excellent, thank you. Um, so this, this talk is sort of following on quite closely uh, from, from Carolyn's talk, um, sort of looking at the, the same sort of idea. Um, here we have the Emerwood detector model, which of course everyone here is familiar with. Um, it's commonly used in relative quantum information, quantum field theory, and it's in particular a, an idealized model that's looked at uh, for the atom-light interaction in quantum, quantum optics. Um, the basic idea is that we have some two-level system being the detector interacting with a field, usually taken to be a scalar field. It was originally proposed by Anru as the as a box detector model, but was simplified to be some point like monopole detector by DeWitt. Uh, what's very interesting is that this simplification is oftentimes undone because the monopole model suffers from ultraviolet divergences. Um, there's a number of ways to resolve that issue. One of which perhaps the mo most common in the literature is to introduce a spatial profile for the detector, which I've uh, have down below. We have some smearing function for the detector here. Um, but uh, there's there's alternative ways of um, dealing with this, perhaps slightly, slightly alternatively. Well, one could also include a, a smearing function as well to what we're doing. But one, one I guess, desires a uh, extended model um, of this underdewitt detector because the, the, the conventional model is semi-classical in the sense that the field is quantized, the detector follows a classical world line. One can develop a fully fully quantized uh, model featuring a quantized center of mass. This has been uh, done before by, uh, by Stritchelberger and Kempf. Um, what they have looked at is modifying the standard underwood detector to include um, a kinetic energy term a squared on 2m in the free Hamiltonian. Um, and they've modified the interaction Hamiltonian so that the field has an operator valued position, which in effect means you have these uh, position states, um, which you have a tensor product with, um, with uh, your, your internal states of your, of your detector. Um, what one can do is then one can look at the transition rate perturbatively and using probation theory like usual and consider consider some particular physical processes such as spontaneous emission absorption or vacuum excitation uh, if you do that you find a transition rate which is a functional of your uh, initial wave function for your detector um, and you have this template function which is um, some, some function which characterizes all the dynamics of your system. Um, now we can sort of take this, this uh, framework and consider the case um, extended a bit more. Um, the reason for this is that in the non-relativistic model, we're not fully accounting for the, the relativistic dynamics of the detector. And in particular, we're mixing the uh, symmetries. The detector um, uh, obeys the obeys some Galilean symmetry, while the field is is uh, is uh, described by the, the the Lorentz group. And the mixing of these symmetries can lead to some spurious um, velocity dependent effects. This is also something that, that Caroline Caroline mentioned in their previous talk. Um, and so there's two possible approaches to resolving this. Um, one can uh, consider everything eh, quote unquote semi-relativistically, where you have um, some rel relativistic corrections you add in and you promote the mass to an operator. Um, but an alternative approach is that you have a fully relativistic model of the, de of the detector's dynamics. And if you do that, you actually have a choice on how exactly to formulate the model, whether you want to uh, take a, a first or a second quantized approach uh, when describing the detector. 
Um, if you take a first quantized approach, you have for your detector, um, your free Hamiltonian uh, obeys the usual relativistic dispersion relation. And the interaction Hamiltonian is identical to um, what you have in the non-relativistic case. Um, here, I have written uh, the mass as an operator, the mass energy operator. Um, this is perhaps uh, not, um, maybe not, maybe not like not everyone will probably probably know what's going on here, but uh, it's motivated for a number of, number of reasons. Um, one being that uh, one does not have mass super selection if you are dealing with a full relativistic model, and it sort of comes out quite nice or follows quite uh, quite quite trivially from um, considering a relativistic quantum mechanics to just promote operator to mass. Uh, in this case, for the, in this case here, so we have a two level system for a detector. The mass operator spans the ground state and excited states of the detector. Um, the, the perhaps more, more uh, difficult thing or the other nuanced uh, point to make is that in relativistic quantum mechanics, one does not have a clear notion of, of a position operator. Um, and so one has to make a decision on how exactly to localize the detector. Um, for a um, detector with no internal structure besides the two energy levels, it's, I think, fairly straightforward. And you can um, take the same uh, position operator as found in the non-relativistic case, which is the Newton-Wigner position operator, um, where it has some eigenstate and an eigenvalue, um, and everything's nicely orthogonal and, and localized. Um, if one starts from a second quantized model, then you are representing the detector not, well, you're not re re representing the detector by some nice localized first quantized system, but now as some composite scalar field, where one of the fields one of the fields has a ground state mass energy and the other field has the excited state mass energy, and you're transitioning between um, these two fields. This was actually proposed um, by Anru in the original paper and has also recently been looked at by Flamini and, and um, Akem in uh, a recent paper on, on quantum reference frames. Um, this is a, a quite complicated uh, model. So it, what's uh, very, uh, a simple approximation one can make is to restrict the detector to the one particle sector. And you get, um, again, the same interaction Hamiltonian as the first quantized case, but where the position states are non-orthogonal. So there's a difference there in the localization of the detector states. Now, what we can do is we can actually um, try and compare these two models, the first and second quantized cases. And particularly, we want to see um, when these two models agree, and if there's any regimes where they disagree. Um, to do this, we look at one particular um, case, or specialized one particular case, in this case, spontaneous emission. Um, again, uh, the reason why we're doing this is um, when we have looked at the fully quantized model, um, we we sort of complicate things a bit. Um, if, for people familiar with the Unruh DeWitt model, one usually, um, can separate out the detector dynamics and um, look at purely the field, in which case you look at something called the response function. And the detector's selectivity is just some constant factor. Uh, that's not the case here. And so things are a bit more complicated. You have to look at the full transition rate. And so you can't make this, this clean separation. In a, in a some sense, that separation is a bit of an over-idealization, um, which we're, we're again going back on. Um, we have to choose some initial state for a detector if you look at our, our transition rate functional. Um, we, in this case, pick a, a Gaussian state, which is a fairly sensible um, state to choose. One might also consider something like a, uh, or might, might think to consider something like a plane wave, but due to the non-normalizability of plane waves, um, you can't really get uh, a, a, a result out actually. If you um, do all the, the calculations um, to derive the template functions for the first and second quantized models, in this case, spontaneous emission, the detector's initially in the excited state, the field's in the vacuum, 
um, it falls to the ground state and we emit some, some photon. Um, if you derive uh, the template functions in the first quantized case, you have some uh, square root Too for your, your, um, your detector. While in the second quantized case, interestingly, you get a reciprocal of the square root. There's an important difference there in the, the dynamics. And these template functions are, uh, in the relativistic case, even simpler than the non-relativistic case in the vacuum, which is a bit of a surprising result. Um, the last point to make um, before I move on to the results is that the dimensions of the coupling constant between the two models is different. In fact, they have they have different dimensions. So if you require that the models agree in the non-relativistic regime, then you can equate the two coupling constants and then have some meaningful comparison. And so now if you plot these results, um, all of these plots are done um, in the Compton scale of the detector. What you find is that on the left, where we have uh, the template function plotted, um, we have the first quantized um, template function following this, this square root behavior and increasing with uh, large momentum. Well, the second quantized case, we are um, uh, reducing in the magnitude of our template function. And consequentially, if you look at the transition rate, in this case, the spontaneous emission rate of the, of the detector, where the length um, here, of course, being the, the width of our, our Gaussian uh, wave packet, you noticeably have a difference in the transition rates for low for small energy cap uh, and quite quite substantial uh, disagreement, um, which is which is quite interesting uh, to see. Um, so okay, so in summary, we have um, a fully relativistic quantum mechanical model of the under detectors. We've obtained some analytical results in the vacuum, and this these results can be extended uh, for the medium. You will have to obtain. You have to um, look at that numerically since. Um, things are a bit more complicated there. Um, and what's what's interesting is that we do have this uh, disagreement between the first and second quantized models um, due to the different localizations of the, de of the detectors. Thank you. All right, thank you, Evan. I was about to say uh, one quick question, but I uh, already get a uh, uh, faster than light contribution. Rob, uh, Go ahead, try to make it a sort of Yeah, sure. So I'm just wondering uh, uh, what's involved in extending, you say fully relativistic, but it's not in curved space time, right? Right, sorry. So so relativistic so, under the Lorentz group rather than- Yeah, curved so space have you thought about how to put it in curved space? Um, Non-initial detectors and curved space time is um, a bit more complicated <laughs> of, of a generalization. So that, that will, I think, take a lot more work, but it, it's something on the table we are thinking about. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I think it'd be very interesting to go to that regime. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Rob. And uh, let's thank Evan again. Thank you very much, Evan. Thank you.